best friends in the whole entire world av but i call him hubby um and i just need to get dressed i can't go out looking like this um i'm not gonna do nothing too serious just a real light beat um so i now here looking like a thumb um but yeah so what i'll do is i'll just kind of update you on today what's been happening today um and then also um i want to talk about uh, the Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the other um, other people who passed as well. I really would like to talk about that tragedy. So yeah. Okay. Um, I already put some lip gloss on. Um, this is the um, it's by Piccolo, and this is literally the best lip gloss you could ever use. Like any flavor. It's so amazing. Thank me later. They are a little costly. Um, they used to be like $8. I don't know how much they are now, but yeah. So um, basically, today's been busy. Um, not a bad day. The girls have had a pretty decent day. Um, they had just ABA, um, no other therapies. And my, my husband had to do some running around. Um, to get stuff ready for his new command that he'll be going to. So I was home with the littles trying to get some work done. Excuse me. And we are um, going to be applying for some new services for our girls. So basically what I've been doing today is just um, trying to find all the paperwork um, needed for that. So I guess good and bad, I keep everything. So I had pretty much everything I needed. I just needed to find it. Cause again, we just moved in. So I have no idea where anything is. Um, so yeah. Um, what was I saying? Sorry. Okay, yeah. So um, yeah, today was cool. Um, had to go in the garage and look for some stuff. I found some stuff. I didn't find a lot more stuff, but it's just gonna have to be um, a bit of a work in progress. So yeah, that was today. Um, also worked on a budget and then um, one other project that I have going on, but that's the basis of today. Um, so to go into the whole tragedy of Kobe Bryant and the other um, the others that passed as well, I, I was sick, y'all. I was absolutely so sad and so discouraged for um, the first couple of days. It was really, really, really hard to process. And please excuse me not doing a serious sit down. Um, I just don't know if I'll be able to do one soon. And so I really while it's fresh on everyone's mind, I really wanted to um, speak up on it. Like I didn't want to let the time pass. Um, some of my friends and family who follow me on social media know that um, the push that I needed to get out here and start my YouTube channel was the passing of Kobe. And not because I was like some super huge fan because I wasn't um I was a fan though so and to be honest like every single time I made a shot like I said Kobe like everybody else did I'm very aware that he's one of the greatest players of um of our of all time and so um you know definitely mourning him as a great basketball player um but above that Deeper than that for me is, you know, I'm in mourning for his wife. Um, I cannot imagine losing my lifelong partner as well as one of my children. And then on top of that, she actually, or for what I understand is that she wasn't informed. 
first. Um, she found out the same way we did, which was like a social media platform. And I do believe um, TMZ broke the news. And so for her to have to find out that she just lost her husband and her daughter via um, a social media platform is just devastating to me. Um, I really f understand that there's like this new level of lack of privacy for people and not just famous people and stars and so forth but just everyone in general but I do believe that some things do need to be um done in private and I do believe that she should have been notified prior to that story being broke um just out of just out of respect for her um so that broke my heart and um you know, so I've been mourning with her deeper than I've been mourning with anyone else. Um, and I'm not saying that the loss of the other families are any less important or any less tragic uh, because they definitely are. Um, but she was the first person that I thought of and I am in mourning with her. I literally am in mourning with her. And... Um, you know, I'm also very in tune and in touch with, um, you know, who I am as a person and very in tune and in touch with vibes and other people's vibes as well. And so I could literally feel millions of people mourning, um, for these families and that was the hardest part for me it was a physical feeling in my soul that I felt heavily for the first two days um mourning these families and you know I I am aware that some people you know were on social media platforms saying that it's you know we it wasn't that serious. He was just a star. We don't know him. We don't know those families. You know, why is everyone being so dramatic? I mean, just weird. And for me, you know, another human losing their lives, um, that's already tragic. So for other people not to feel absolutely anything, um, you know, that's a little worrisome um but at the end of the day I think it's it's important to allow people to grieve um you know there's some people who looked up to him and he was like a role model to them and, and they based so many things of their lives off of him and who he is and what he does you know for his family or what he did for his family in the game so you know they they felt like a family member passed away so you know to to tell someone or try attempt to tell someone um that they shouldn't have the right to mourn the loss of someone that they truly loved is extremely insensitive and to me it's a little inhumane um but that's just me that's my opinion um but at the end of the day what that did for me is that it was a real reminder, even though I say it so often, it was a real reminder that life is extremely short. And, um, you know, he was healthy, he was young, he was wealthy, um, he didn't have any major issues that any of us knew about him and his wife were doing well, his daughters are appear to be doing great. Um, he had just retired like two or three years ago. So he was really just starting his life. And so at 41 and his daughter at 13 and the other families, um, you know, young, young families and young, young women, um, they're gone. And so that really encouraged me to start my YouTube channel was like I could be gone tomorrow and I don't want to sit around waiting and saying I don't have enough time or I don't have the right equipment or you know you know people have been encouraging me to do it forever but you know cool you know 100 people will watch me but will anybody else and so just really telling myself like 
just do it. And I know it just sounds like a little like a Nike slogan, but if you really think about it, it's really just that. Sometimes you have to just do it. And that's exactly what I did. Um, you know, I just did it. And I can't say that I would have started if it wasn't for, or I can't say I would have started when I started if it wasn't for that tragedy um, with Kobe and the other families as well. So, um, basically the point of that was just to, you know, I know you don't need permission from me, but if you needed an extra, it's okay to mourn, um, it's okay to mourn, you know, it's okay to, to mourn the loss of another life. Whether you knew somebody personally or not, whether you're just spiritually connected to life and love, it's also okay for you to mourn. Um, whether you feel bad for his other daughters, maybe you're young, um, you know, you're you're 12, 13, and you're thinking about what if you lost your, your older sister or, you know, whoever it is that you may be mourning for, um, that's okay. You know, you, you're allowed those moments. And so, basically, that was it for me. I am not as torn and distraught as I was um, the first two days. I was really, really, really struggling. Um, but I told myself that, you know, I had to stay focused um, so that I could do something with that pain. Um, because it was the same thing with, with Nip, Nipsey Hussle when he passed. I barely even knew Nipsey Hussle. Um, I knew of him because, you know, I live in Southern California. He's from Southern California. And so um, I definitely knew of him. And when I heard his music, I was like, oh, you know, that's that's dope, whatever. Um, and because I followed his girl... Lauren London, I knew a little bit more about him, but I didn't know him like other people know him. Um, and it wasn't until his passing to where I actually really got to know who he was and learning of the amazing things that he was doing for his community and um, in his old neighborhood um, and just, just a great person that he was really becoming. And when, so to see this black brother lose his life um, with, give me one second, lost my eyelash. I don't know. I found it. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, to, to see this young black brother lose his life over what, from what I understand it to be, is just some jealousy. Um, could be a little deeper than that, but... Um, you know, we speak on what we know. Um, it was really hard and it was really rough. And before I even learned all that awesome stuff that he was, you know, again, doing for his neighborhood and his community and so forth, I was mourning for London. Um, I call her London, but, you know, Lauren London. Um, but I was really mourning for her um that was again the the wife in me and you know just because she doesn't have a title doesn't mean she wasn't holding down her business um so i'm okay with her being in that in that general category um but i was mourning with her i absolutely cannot imagine losing my spouse um, someone that I deeply loved and spent time with every single day and, and shared a child with. Um, and so for me, that was, um, that's what touched my heart the most is really like understanding that, you know, that's what touched my heart the most is really like feeling and hurting for her um that's that's where that was for me and so um that one 
I can say this death, Kobe and the others, um, hit me faster than Nip did. Um, it was real fast, boom, boom, and then I could feel everybody. Um, but because I'm turning this energy into something positive, I don't think it'll lo it'll last as long because I remember like three weeks had passed and I was like, damn, Nip's gone. Like not even knowing him, but just learning more about him and just being sad with the rest of the world. Like three weeks later, it was like still like, I can't believe that really happened. And it's been a couple days now, might've been a week, might have been a week now. Um, but I, I'm still sad. Um, but I'm encouraged as well. So I'm extremely encouraged to do something different, to try something else, um, to try something new or to stick to what I may have already started and is doing well for me, um, on a deeper level than what I already was. I was already uh, trying to live my life to the fullest and trying to um, really do well in new things. And with the whole Kobe thing, it just really made it so much more bigger of a deal for me at least. So yeah. Um, that's basically everything I wanted to say about that. Um, you know, a lot of people ask why, 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 and I, I don't have the answers. I wouldn't even know. That's, you know, not my job to have the answer. But what I will say is that um, in every loss, um, understand the lesson because in every lesson there's a blessing and I know it may sound cheesy because it rhymes but it really is the honest to God truth um, every single lesson in life there's a little bit of a blessing you don't just go through things just to go through things there is something you needed to learn and so with all of us in mourning I'm hoping that most people are learning that life is really short and you really should be out here living your best life, um, doing what you love to do or maybe doing what you have to do to get to where you want to be so you could do what you love to do. Um, but there's definitely a lesson in this. And like I said, for me, the lesson was you know, life short, get out here and do it. And I'm always thinking about my legacy. You know, when I do pass, um, how will people remember me? Will they remember, you know, something I said to them, something I did for them, the way I acted towards them, some type of level of love and kindness and encouragement? Like, that's what I want people to know me or remember me by. Not, not anything else, you know, not by you know, the way I dressed or the way I looked or, you know, any of the materialistic things. Um, I don't really care for people to remember me by that. You know, I really want people to, to know me, to have known me <laughs> and to remember me by all the things that I pride myself on. And, you know, I really do pride myself on being um, a, a genuine person. Everything you see of me is exactly who I am. You know, if I'm being super proper and professional, that's who I am. That is a part of my DNA. Um, and, you know, if I'm being a little hood, little ghetto, you know what I'm saying? That's literally a part of my DNA. I'm being a little sedity and, you know, clutching my pearls because we in a part of town that I don't know of. That is literally a part of my DNA. DNA, you know, if I'm listening to a little you know bullet for valentine all these things i hate you know and i'm rocking out that's literally in my dna you know i love country music that's in my dna i would go to a country fest and sing country songs and wear cowgirl sh shoes and you know 
all of those things is is what I am and is a part of me. And so for me, um, would love for my legacy to be like, she always was what she said she was. Like, we didn't see her one day and she was acting sedity and the next day she's acting ghetto and we were like, ooh, what is that? You know, all of those things are what I am. And I'm comfortable with being um, all those different things because they all are a part of me. And everyone has a little bit of that. No one is one way all the time. Um, everyone, you know, has a little bit of, of a little bit of everything in them. So, well, maybe not everything, but you know. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I hope that everyone who is still mourning the loss of um, everyone involved in the helicopter crash with Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi, um, that you are doing well and that you're getting through this process. And don't allow anyone to tell you that you're not allowed to be in mourning um, because you are. We all are. So yeah, um, but I'm going to um, just bake a little bit because I have super oily skin and that's really the only reason why I put on foundation like is because my skin is so oily that I have to put something some type of base on my face and then add some um like a loose setting powder so that it can control the oil otherwise I'd be out here looking a mess um and then after that I'm just gonna whip my hair up real quick throw some clothes on and then head out to hang out with hubby so see y'all soon hey y'all so I am getting ready to head out to hang out with hubby um not the hubby but my best friend hubby um just wanted to show you the outfit of the day nothing special um no shoes on yet but I'm just gonna put on some sandals but I got some leggings from Torrid. They are like low-key see-through right here. You can't really see it through the lighting. And then this is just like a sweater. Um, it has like gold sparkles in it. It's black. Um, I just want to be warm. I know I look like a mom, but I am a mom. <laughs> and then I just straighten my hair. I just put a little bit of curl in the front. Sorry, y'all. Just a little curl in the front. Didn't do nothing to the back. Just left it straight. Just bumped it a little bit. So, and I know I have gold on with silver accessories, but I still don't know where anything is. This is how the makeup turned out. And then too serious. Look, I'm already getting oily. What I tell y'all. Um, but yeah, it's me getting ready to head out. <laughs> best friends um again I call him hubby and one of our other best friends Damien call him shorty um he came over as well and it just wasn't like the best climate for recording um we just were really utilizing that time to catch up and just talk about life and what we've been going through and kind of you know our futures and stuff and so um, I just wanted to respect everybody's privacy. Um, and yeah, but next time, um, yeah, next time, you know, we get together, we'll be sure to get on camera. Um, but yeah, had a great time just hanging out and talking and catching up. Um, and now I'm going to get a little bit of work done and then I'm going to head off to bed. So just wanted to close this part of the blog out. All right. Bye.
Hey everyone, so we are out and about right now. We're currently at the gas station getting gas because um, we are headed up north so that we can get some fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, I do think I mentioned that we wanted to go this route because we really want to see if it has a difference on how we feel and just our overall health. Um, trying fruits and vegetables that don't have all the BS. Right, see, she agrees. Right, um, that doesn't have all the BS, like the stuff in the stores. So um, when we get up there, I'm definitely gonna do some filming and then hopefully we can find some great stuff. All right, see y'all later. I just wanted to do a really quick haul to show everything that we got at both farmers market i only got footage of us um like walking around the second one because the first one was really small and it had a lot of people there and so like a lot of people were talking and we just didn't want to be intrusive um so yeah this is from the first farmers market and so um i think i know what everything is so this is a leak um, it's not a regular leak. They said it was like some other kind of leak. Um, but yeah, excited to use these. We're going to use it in soup. So those are the leaks. And then we got some tangelos. And these look a lot like regular tangerines. But they said they were tangelos. So we're really excited to try them and taste them out to see how they end up actually tasting. And then we got some... I think these are lento beans um and we're going to be using these for a soup so two packs of these they're about that big and then they also had these kind which is another kind of lento bean and they said that they normally don't notice the difference between taste it's just like the look and so i felt like these would look really good too in a soup so excited to use those and then we got some purple um, basil. So this is more for like garnishing. So excited to use this. I'm not sure what we're gonna use it for, maybe the soup. Um, but yeah, it is really fresh and a really pretty color. Um, so yeah, we're definitely excited to use that. Then we have some fresh kale. Um, we got two bundles and this is definitely for the soup and it looks really good here's the second one i'm so excited about that and then this was like a spe special kind of spinach um and so you can use it for salad um but the gentleman said that they normally use it for like a spinach dip so i'm either gonna try a spinach dip or i'm gonna use it like um probably not for a salad so not 100% sure, but I really do like spinach. And it definitely tastes way different than regular, like, baby spinach. Um, they definitely let you try stuff, so it's good. I'm not sure what I'm using it for, but yeah. And then, last but not least, from there, we got these cute little baby strawberries. They're so little and so cute. They're perfect for our daughters. Um, I just think it's so cute for them. They're really, really, really small just the cutest little strawberries ever so yeah that's everything that we got from the first place all right and here is everything that we got from the second place and so we did get some footage from that place please excuse the background noise i am outside it feels really good out here today um 
But yeah, so here are some lemons and they're a great size. Um, and so we're gonna make some salsa. So definitely gonna use those for the salsa. Then we also got some limes, they're a good size too. They will be used for salsa. We also got some avocado and I do put avocado in my salsa cause we like ours a little chunky. Um, so there is two avocados. Um, and then two tomatoes. These are a great size. They had really good tomatoes there. Um, like this is how big it is. Good size tomato. And they didn't have any onions, so I'll have to use like a regular store onion for the salsa, but I'm definitely excited about that. They also had fresh cilantro. And see, it still has the roots attached. Um, but yeah, that's the fresh cilantro. And then um, from there, we also got some raspberries, and our girls love all fruit, so, um, yeah, the raspberries for them. So, yeah. And then strawberries, of course. Both my girls like strawberries, but my eldest loves them, um, so they had the big regular size strawberries, so we definitely wanted to get a whole bushel of those, because she could eat this in, like, two days just all by herself um we wouldn't let her probably stretch it out over like three or four but she could eat them by herself and just to compare here is the little baby strawberry from the first place compared to this strawberry so yeah then on to my favorites the greens so um i love lettuce pretty much all lettuces um this is a beautiful push this back Head of red lettuce it's so beautiful it literally like looks like a flower I mean it's insane how pretty this is um, and then yes it's still attached to the roots and then we have some butter lettuce which I love um, and we're gonna make some what are we making we're making chicken lettuce wraps with these because um, they're perfect for chicken lettuce wraps and then again it's still connected to the root beautiful and then lastly we have some green leaf and this looks really healthy it's still attached to the root but yeah super excited guys all right so here is everything that we got at the farmer's market super excited to use these ingredients for um we're gonna make a soup tomorrow and then with the other ones, um, you know, we're going to make a nice salad and then give the girls the fruit. So we're definitely excited about that. Um, but yeah, really happy with this and super excited. Yay!